Yo, what is going on guys? Dylan Miller here and welcome to Season 2 of NASCAR Thunder 2003, but with a twist. My, the schedule, instead of being a normal Winston Cup Series schedule in 2002, I based it all off the, my NASCAR I have Cup Series schedule. Starting at Daytona, going to Vegas, going to California, Rockingham, well, the season six schedule, which will be next year. Homestead, which was kind of the equivalent of Brighton. Um, Martinsville, the equivalent of Holman Gray at night. Um, Watkins Glen and Finion, the two road courses. Michigan, Pocono. Chicago becomes a day race in season six, by the way. Uh, North Carolina is kind of cool in the Pikes Peak. Then... That's kind of the equivalent of Portland, Sebring. Um, you guys get the idea. This will be a night race in season six. I mean, it was already a night race in, this, in season five, but it'll be a Friday night race, season six. This is a night race, this is a night race, this is a night race, and uh, this will be a night race, but I don't have the night track unlocked for Atlanta. So, let's go ahead and. Bang out the qualifying duels and it's kind of weird. So let's go ahead and fall fine. Oh Jesus, I forgot. Copyright, copyright, crap, 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 copyright, 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 copyright. Copyright. Almost had a small baby after that. So we got to take Sterling Marlin off the pole. Um, I don't know if you saw this, but I fear it surprised y'all on the, yep, Dale Earnhardt Jr. The guy that literally had no alternate schemes in his NASCAR, any NASCAR game until, like, you know, any scheme with a major difference. Um, the guy who had no alternate schemes until NASCAR 09 that looked glaringly different, not just minor swaps. I mean, 06 kind of had an inverted scheme. Had his inverted scheme here in the 500 that year. The 05 500, I believe. Um, I do remember that because I used to have to diecast that, but I lost it when I was younger. 30 second. Hooray, I'm doing the duels. This will take me some time to get back to the swing of things in terms of uh, the duel. In terms of uh, driving control, I've been so used to the new NASCAR games like uh, 04, I can just 04 bips left and right. 05, it's stiff, but you can get used to it easy. Um, By the way, if you guys remember back to season one with Kurt Busch, at the end of the Let's Play, that playthrough, I showed all the EA Sports season previews. I'm going to do the same thing for 04. And wow, I started 19th. So, anyways, oh wow, people are already they're just scraping along the wall there. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and look through the rules for the 125s. The Gatorade 125s determine the starting positions for the Daytona 500. First race determines the inside row. Second race determines the outside. Front row is based off qualifying time alone. 
In the front row are the Gordon Bar and the Kellogg Chevrolet. In the second row are the UPS Ford and the Sprint Dodge. Starting the race from row three are the Interstate Battery Sonic oh. and the Kia Miller Dodge. Yeah. The fourth row has the 27 car and the Dale Jr. Chevrolet. Starting the race from row five will be the Napa Auto Parts Chevrolet and the Target Dodge. In row six, we have a 12 car and the Rubbermaid Ford. Starting from row seven will be the Sirius Satellite Radio Dodge and the Square D Chevrolet. In the eighth row are the M&M's Pontiac and the Dodge Dealer's UAW Dodge. In the ninth row, we have the America Online Chevrolet and the Citgo Ford. In the 10th row are the 37th car and the Cheerios Dodge. And rounding out the field is the 46 car. And the 63 car. Don't forget, don't forget Shane Hall now. Alright, so NASCAR Thunder 2003 Season 2. Schedule will be based off the IOP Cup Series. Um, yeah. We start 8th in this duel. And the green flag is out. We've got five laps. I'm going to try to see if I can squeeze behind Jamie with Murray, which I can do without much issue. Um, in terms of tires and pit stops, I do have those turned on. I believe I may have to look, take a look at game settings after this rate after the 500. Um, but I believe I had those turned on. Holy crap, Bobby Labonte! I almost tried to make it full line on you. Um, that can be thankful I'm nice. Look at that, getting a bit big run right here on uh, Ward Burton for six. Because right now everybody is going single file. I have literally no drafting help. And Murray's moved up into the top five by uh, moving up to fourth. Whoa, God. What were you thinking, man? You just came right in front of me when you knew I had had better momentum than you. You just came right in front of me, like, dude, are you high? Apparently, you see the top four starting to pull away from uh, Kyle Petty. By the way, I will do the Budweiser shootout in a separate video, which you can actually see the Budweiser shootout, which was uploaded earlier today. Um, I know a lot of y'all are, especially a lot of you uh, PRA viewers, are kind of pissed you have to go back to school, but at the same time, you know, shit happens, and when you really think about it, I'm actually, most of y'all are going to be seniors anyway. You're top dog, you're God, so my advice to you, Take a leadership role. That's my advice. Take a leadership role. Make your senior year actually worth something. And don't, you know, pencil dick around with your fist up your ass half the time saying you're too scared to lead. Two laps to go, and I'm getting a heck of a run on Dale Jarrett with virtually no drafting help after drafting with the five of Terry Labonte. Holy crap, I'm flying. Drafting with uh, Thordius Sterling Marlin. I'm going to go straight to the inside. Marlin shuts the door. And 
Can I get a bigger, better run on him this time? I think I might have it here. Side by side for the lead. White flag. Jarrett trying to go to the inside. Now we got to keep blocking. Yep, I have fuel and tire wear on. And Burns is through fuel quite a bit. Jarrett with a big run on the outside lane. Both of them have no drafting help. However, one of them is going to push me to a Gatorade dual win. And that one looks to be Dale Jarrett. Blocking. See what Jarrett's going to do. Is he going to go up high? Is he going to go down low? It's not going to be enough. Dale Jr. wins Gatorade Twin 125 race one. A rare caution-free race. Yeah, and that can be physically exhausting to these drivers. Not only do the cautions give them a chance to catch up on the racetrack, it also gives both their minds and their bodies a little break. They've all got to be drained after that one. Dale Earnhardt Jr. passed an awful lot of cars on his way to a win. Yeah, he probably feels like he passed 100 cars on the track. Yeah, right there. I have no idea what James Murray was thinking. Series. It all pays off, though, when you win. I'm going to go back here and show, let you guys... Uh, so, that was the win. So, here with McMurray, ignore that. So right here, I'm trying to squeeze between Labonte, and then right here, you see, watch the 27. I get a wet, it can run. He thinks he can try to fit his car in there. That'll give us a better angle here. Yeah, he fits a better car, tries to fit himself between me and Terry Labonte. No idea what he was thinking. Here we are at the Great American Race, the Daytona 500, the NASCAR Winston Cup Series premier event. This is Joe Moore, and I'm with Barney Hall to bring you live flag-to-flag -flag coverage on MRN. With the history and prestige here at this track, the teams seem to be all pushing themselves just a little harder this week. The list of former winners here is very prestigious indeed. Who wouldn't want their name to be on it? Who knows? Maybe we'll add another lucky driver when this one's all over. So there's the rest of this 43 car field, even though I run with the 34 in my series. Um, see a lot of paint schemes in this race. Definitely a lot more than an average 100,004 race. Um, Gordon's got his uh, Pepsi 4th of July for some reason. I'm a big fan of that car. Um. And line. apparently that was it. So we'll go Starting ahead and look for the rest of the field. The Ganassi Racing Dodge and the Dale Jr. Chevrolet. Starting in row two will be the Mark Martin Ford in the 26 car. In row three are the 88 car and the DuPont Chevrolet. In row four are the Kellogg Chevrolet and the Lowe Chevrolet. Rounding out the top ten starting spots are the Sprint Dodge and the GM Goodrich Service Plus Chevrolet. The sixth row has the Caterpillar Dodge and the Bam Racing Dodge. In row seven are the Napa Auto Part Chevrolet and the Team Rusty Ford. Starting the race from row 8 are the 12 car and the Home Depot Pontiac. And in row 9 are the Interstate Batteries Pontiac and the Valvoline Pontiac. Starting in row 10 will be the Dodge Dealers UAW Dodge and the Motorcraft Ford. In row 11 yeah, are the 27 car and the Spinzoil Chevrolet. In 
row 12 are the target dodge and the DeWalt power tools for it. Row 13 finds the Rubbermaid Ford and the 98 car. The 14th row has the Sitco Ford and the Sitco Already we got people room riding on the pace lap. Oh, shit. Well, I don't get to see the rest of the field. We're green at Daytona. Let's see if I Oh, God. Stole it. So, yeah, the thing that goes for Perch all games kind of going against uh, the logic of rules for the 125. If you win a duel after starting uh, in a piss poor position, you basically get a spot on the front row, even though the game said earlier that the spots for the front row are locked in. Start, anyways, Todd Bonin is slid in the second. The underfunded team that could, that was pretty strong in 2001 with Jimmy Spencer is uh, going to try to take the lead on lap one of the Daytona 500. Remember, Dale Jr. finished second here in 2001, obviously, save for his father's death. He was very strong at the restricted place. He was, oh, God, Sterling. Uh, oh, big rack, turn two, we stay green. Anyways, uh, what I was going to say earlier, um, what, save for his, his father's death in 2001, um, Dale Jr. was strong on the stricter plates. Finished well in the cautionless Talladega race. Won here in July with probably one of the coolest celebrations I've ever seen. And I was, what, three months old at that time? Good job. Um, three, maybe four months old. Give or take. Yeah. Um, he finished second in this race in 2001, and so far, save for that little moment with Sterling Marlin that should have ended in a huge wreck, we're uh, running pretty good. Oh, God, Terry Labonte. Dude. Chill your ass out, my boy. That, after that brief uh, butt clencher of a moment, looks like uh, Kyle Petty is trying to get into the top five. Well, he is in the top five. He's up in fourth. So, yeah. Now that there's a smaller group trying to join the league with, with the cars, Group of about six behind me. Waltrip, I'm oh, sorry, Rusty Wallace is down at Pitt Road. Kyle Petty trying to push us to the lead. That's another established racing name in NASCAR. Kyle the Petties, Richard Petty, King of NASCAR, Dale Sr., the Intimidator, and here's their sons trying to lead the outside of the lane in the Daytona 500. A lane that nobody wants to be in in the corners. How about this? Kyle Petty up on the outside. I'm just going inch on down pit road. We could do a can, but 
we might be tied. Ah, fuck it. Oh god, no, not half a can. Um. Hopefully this is a good stop. Looks to be that way. And it looks like uh, Terry Labonte and Lloyd Burton are out first. There's uh, Rusty Wallace. racetrack. Oh, Jesus. Sorry, Jimmy. Um, tight moment there. It's all good. And fall back in line. Um, four laps to go. Wow, a lot of cars were damaged after that early moment where I got into Sterling Marl and I'm surprised that wasn't a bigger issue than it what could have been. Genuinely surprised. As Jeff Burton got in the wall off to stay green. So it looks like we might get a top 15 run out of this. Which really isn't that bad. I mean could be worse, unless there's like a big freaking explosion in front of me. Um, this will just ride around. Um, three laps to go as we speak. There's a big group of cars in front of me that I'm trying to catch. They're three wide too, so it technically shouldn't be this hard. So yeah, I guess we're gonna ride around two to go. There's like 17 cars in one big group. That's kind of segregated in individual groups. Um, yeah. Let's see if I can get a push from Frank Kimmel, unless he decides to duck out. Go up high. Check your fuel gauge. Not much gas left. Just, just slide right behind him. There's no way I'm gonna try to do it. My car's even gonna do anything. We gotta pick up seven Down the back stretch we go for one final time. Looks like Kevin Harvick is about to do what Dale Senior waited 20 years to do in his first full time season. Out of turn four. Looks to be. We got a couple cars slow. One going into the pits. And Kevin Harvick just won the Daytona 500.
Wow, all right. <laughs> Two seconds. The yellow flag didn't fly at all in this one. Well, that's good news for all these race teams. I have no idea how no major wrecks. This has been Sterling Marlin didn't Winston cause a racing. huge freaking pile up right there because he was MRN. wicked sideways. Next up is Las Vegas. If you saw that, he was dead ass sideways. <laughs> So yeah, it's when points aren't going to matter, and paint scheme choice, just run the 2001, why, why not? Um, to be perfectly honest, scheme choice really doesn't matter because there's no glaring difference. See you uh, next Friday for Vegas.